One of the big challenges when we build AI in India is that we think we'll just copy paste whatever's happening in the Silicon Valley, do the exact same thing. Uh, but soon we'll start to realize is that innovation in India is designed differently. We talk about AI being these fancy ChatGPT large language models, but in order to really host those, you need good compute, you need good data. And so typically that is Indian data centers, Indian language data sets. And without solving these problems, it's very, very hard to actually meaningfully build something. So with all these photographs in mind, there are four things we do at People Plus AI. The first one is we try to figure out which are the Indian population scale use cases. So if you're building AI in India, how must it be designed to actually take off in India? We can't just copy what's happening in the US. Secondly, what type of infrastructure will help support the growth of AI? Third thing that we do is create community spaces like this. At People Plus AI, we are all of seven people and eight other fellows, and that's it. Um, so if we're actually innovating, it's not our brilliant minds, I promise you that. It's actually through crowdsourcing ideas. And last thing we do is that um, at one point, people used to live in this philosophy where if we build something great, people will just come. And somehow they will find us, they will discover us. We just have to keep building a great product and never talk about it, they will magically find us. Uh, sad reality, that's not true. Um, so while you're building something great, you also have to talk about it. So one of the things we do at People Plus AI is actively champion great startups, solutions. And uh, today we'll be seeing six great solutions that are in the education space. Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, I'm Pratik. I used to be a school teacher at one point, then built something for teachers that's been used by about 300,000 teachers over the past year. Uh, we built something, a simple lesson planning tool because I was bad at lesson planning. And uh, we started talking to a lot of users, how they learn, how they consume information. We spoke to teachers, instructional designers, and we spoke to students, most importantly, like people like us. Uh, what we realized is one of the best or the biggest problem today or the is that I learn a lot on the internet. I learn a lot by watching YouTube videos, by listening to some great podcasts. So that's where polymath pods come in. We're trying to organize, engage and uncover insights that are hidden away in qualitative data. Right now, videos. So, we've done the questions. This is one of the things that we very strongly believe in. The world's best information today is available on videos or on audio. People don't have the time to sit and write a lot of things. That's where we are trying to organize or help you or help the user organize this information, uh, engage with the information and uncover some really strong insights. Now, how does that work? Instead of me talking, I'm just going to go to YouTube. So on Polymath, what you can do is quickly just copy the link. Not a lot of effort. This is what Polymath Pods looks like. Here's my content, here's people's content, and I'm just going to quickly go and add the video that I've added, uh, picked up. I picked that video up, I added it to Polymath. Along with it, I, I also like Y Combinator's content on how do I get my early users. The thing is, I never can cull out all these insights from different sources together. So can I do that? In pods, you can upload your own videos, create them into interactive experiences, or you can group multiple videos together, make it into a pod. That's the way of organizing information. And you can find insights from your pods literally within seconds. So we've got key takeaways that get created for you. FAQs from across these videos or these collection of videos. We get you the summary spanning both the videos together, which will get you the insights distilled. And these are all presets. These could be created for your organization, for your use case. These are some that we came up with. And the last and personally my favorite bit are the quotes. They sort of give me the sense of what's really happening without watching the entire thing. Kind of like reels, but for, for my own self and things that I really want to learn about. Now I can quickly talk to my videos as well. What are some interesting uh, channels I can go to market with? So whatever answers here come up, uh, if you don't trust me, we've got the sources to back it up. The objective is to be to design something for educators, instructional designers. I When I used to be a teacher, I used to go back to a lot of videos to bring out the best for my classroom and also for learners, for somebody like me who, or somebody like you who wants to engage with the content. 
to uncover deeper insights. So I'll be talking uh, briefly about Shiksha Copilot, which is a research prototype that we have been working for last one year. So we did a survey around one and a half years back, um, uh, working with the thousand plus teachers across India to understand what are the top challenges that they are kind of looking at addressing with the tech tool. Use, use of technology and one of the most important things which came up was two things one is creating engaging content in the form of learning experiences which are personalized for their students and the second thing is how they can improve the self-learning uh, through all these technologies so what is Shiksha Copilot doing this is completely uh, grounded in the local curriculum and the learning objectives uh, this is focusing on the improving the learning outcomes in the classrooms and personalized of the uh, personalization of the curated content and also teaching pedagogy because as we go from schools to school as we move from states to state we know that the pedagogy of uh, teaching modifies and changes as well so how can we easily adapt to these uh, uh, different pedagogies from the teachers how we can bring lot of content um, that Pratik just talked about as well. Right? There is lot of content in the uh, public uh, sector or the private sector which is uh, belonging to a lot of uh, videos or other kind of material. How teachers can utilize that as part of uh, bringing their learning experiences. And as all of you know, if any solution that need to be kind of successful in places like India, it has to be multilingual. It has to do really well in multilingual and of course multimodal interaction. So how do we improve on those? And finally being this as, as a lot of emphasis in EdTech has been given on the uh, students and uh, providing learning experiences for students. But uh, here we really wanted to kind of focus on teachers also because of two reasons as in first is uh, uh, there is we strongly believe that especially in K-12 education, teachers are the important uh, element in the education system. But the other part is from the technology perspective that this is a niche technology and we know that models hallucinate. All of us have seen the hallucinations, right? So we really don't want to expose the technology first to the students and uh, that's where we wanted to design with teacher as an expert in the loop and uh, improve both the capabilities of the models as well as capabilities of the teachers as we build with these experiences. The first thing that uh, we have done is the experiences are completely grounded in curriculum wherein we have extracted the content automated uh, manner from the textbooks and whenever the teacher lands on the particular uh, Shiksha Copilot they would be able to just say that I'm teaching uh, let's say for 6th standard math and all the information about what are the chapters, what are the subtopics, what are the learning outcomes as the high level learning outcomes would be available for the teacher. The next important thing is providing ability to the teachers to kind of uh, really modify the content based on the uh, student level in their class. The next thing is pedagogy adaptation and contextualization. So primarily right now as we are working with uh, government schools in Karnataka, the pedagogy which is being used and the approach which is being used here is the 5E approach where every lesson plan kind of is defined as engage, explore, explain, elaborate and evaluate. The other important thing is contextualization. And many of you who have experience with GPT-4, you would have seen that, let's say, if I'm kind of looking at um, uh, components of food as a chapter, right? If you ask it to provide the activities or information or even the evaluations on this kind of a chapter, it would, most of the times, would bring the concepts from Western world. But how do you really contextualize this content to uh, make it suitable for the local content is the important aspect that we are looking here. The next thing is resources for teachers. There is a lot of content which is available on the internet. But many a times what these teachers are interested in utilizing in classroom is the short videos or very small uh, engaging information which they can consume in let's say less than 10 minutes of time and also which is either simulation or teaching the concept through visualization. So we are actually providing um, uh, specific sort of videos or information and finally the most important thing is multilingual interaction and uh, of course as, in, as we are here we are um, uh, through many other startups which are already working in this space we are seeing that there is a lot of interesting models which are coming which are getting better and better with um, Indic languages. So we are definitely kind of utilizing a lot of this information and finally we also have the child based interaction where the teachers can uh, ask a lot of questions and this is something that uh, many teachers find a uh, lot of uh, kind of use in. We have been focusing on two key metrics. 
the first metric is how much time it saves for the teacher and the second thing is how much uh, uh, quality content that it's creating that they can directly take to the classroom so 90% of the teachers say that they can take this content to the classroom without any modification or with minor modification when they play with it i would say that it's just a start but uh, it's encouraging so uh, we are really excited about this but 85% of your brain development happens before 6 uh, india doesn't have a public preschool system Right, so 40 million children in India lack access to pre-primary education. Half of them can't recognize a single letter or number by the time they go to school, right? And half of those don't recognize it by the time of eight, right? So there's a huge crisis right now. At Rock Learning, our mission is that we wanted to, you know, uh, make sure that no child is left behind and every child has a tutor, right? So overall, what we do is we engage children with bite-sized content on WhatsApp groups. So we have. Uh, 150,000 WhatsApp groups uh, where we have, you know, these communities and, uh, you know, they, they, we send two minute videos, they watch these videos, they send back responses and they get credits, we build a habit and that's how early childhood education happens, right, at scale. So, we're at 10 states, 3.2 million children, 200,000 Anganwadi centers, it costs about 150 rupees per child per year, so we are hoping to keep it cost low and, and scale really quickly. 70% of our children reach school readiness, we hope to move that as well, and most importantly, behavior-wise, caregivers spend, uh, report spending twice the amount of time on educational activities, right? So basically, with that in mind, what we've deployed and sent out there is a worksheet correction algorithm that is worksheet agnostic, so the design of the worksheet is agnostic, right? And we're able to achieve 90% plus accuracy and deploy it with about 50,000 worksheets getting corrected every day. Overall, we've had 150 million interactions in rocket learning and uh, now 80% of the newest interactions have turned to worksheet because we've been able to give an area of interest specific feedback to the, to the user. This is the last thing, which is uh, Saheli, a personal coach. Look, so we ask for 15 to 20 minutes from our mother's time, but the problem is uh, when you're poor, you really don't have the time. What we, what we thought is that Gen AI could really play a, a huge role here in terms of one, understanding what level the child is through a couple of interactions, and then have a voice-based buddy take a con conversational route to teaching. So for example, it could ask, it would say, let's learn the letter Mer today. So basically, it, it would start by pulling up a Merse Machli, showing you a fish, right? And then saying, okay, look at this. Could you say, do you, what, 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 does, what letters does this start with, right? Hi everyone, I'm Rishi. Uh, I'm from Supernova. We're building AI tutors for kids. Um, we're working on multiple subjects, but the one that's pretty mainstream right now where tens of thousands of kids are using it is our spoken English offering. If you leave the top 10%, right, most students struggle with fluent spoken English. It becomes an impediment to them throughout their life, right? Just because you do not have fluent spoken English, um, everything from embarrassment to losing job opportunities because English is actually an enabler and it's a must have in today's day and age. But we are actually at a point where 300 million kids can have 300 million AI tutors. If we solve this problem, it's abundance uh, in the true sense of the word. The main thing that I want to highlight is, although we have an AI tutor, we also have a human mentor in the loop because we are seeing that there are some things that only humans can do. Uh, let's say a student is demotivated, you still need someone to bring them back. So those kind of things that are very human, the human does. But most of the teaching, the AI does in our current thing, right? So, okay, this sounds cool, looks good on paper, but Will kids actually interact with AI? Will they be able to learn? Does it need to speak in their mother tongue? What does it really take, right? So we started from there. And uh, today we have a variety of activities where we've actually gone on the ground. This was uh, from the very beginning, um, you know, early days of the startup, where we went to small towns, spent time in the morning, we'll go. I actually, we actually moved to a small town, uh, spend time prototyping products in the morning, come back, build again, and repeat that cycle. And then that's how we came up with our first few activities that worked. What you're looking at is Priya Darshani, a child who does not know how to use has or have, right? And uh, uh, and uh, use in the pre-test, she, she couldn't score anything, and the post-test, she's 70% there. So this is the kind of translation that you get from the platform. Right, so if you see this thing, as you know, the present continuous tense is used to describe actions. If that's what it is, it's translated. Translator, jaisa ki aap jante hai present continuous tense ka. 
So if you see, it knows what to translate, what not to, and not use all of these pure Hindi words that nobody gets, that nobody understands, right? And kids definitely don't. So, uh, you know, some work over there. So we've done quite a bit of work. In fact, in Supernova, if you do activities, if you're on the paid tire, you constantly get gifts. It's a superficial reward, but it gets the job done. And we've done quite a bit of work like that. To pull off engagement like this and uh, this is where we are uh, that's about it so to start some years ago everyone thought that paper is just going to disappear from the classroom everything will be digital and uh, well and people have been thinking about that for a long time uh, but the reality is during the covid after covid paper is everywhere and our focus at Smart Paper has been integrating paper with digital because we believe that both are going to coexist for a long time. The problem that we are trying to solve, so what we saw is that paper is there in the classroom, it's not going away, people are trying to work with it in the digital world. Um, and when it comes to assessments, uh, if for students the paper exams they happen all the time class tests happen all the time but students rarely get any feedback they just get marks which is not very helpful and from teacher point of view there's so many papers to grade and they cannot provide detailed individual feedback and so this is what we're trying to solve with smart paper right now is to build a software where you can create an assessment a smart paper assessment i'll just show a quick demo of that you can create a smart paper assessment, you can give it to students and when worksheets are completed, you can click photos and the AI will do the grading. And I've heard teachers telling us that uh, they say around 80% of the time, even with MCQs, five hours of work becomes one hour. And they also get a lot of insights, which is uh, difficult to tabulate and get. Smart Paper API has been integrated in Rajasthan government's LMS for the past two years. And so using Smart Paper, what government is now able to do is they are able to assess 50 lakh students in the entire state in 65,000 schools and get the result out in one week. And earlier it used to take a month. And now after the exam is over, within two hours, all the worksheets are uploaded and they're all scanned. So hello everyone, I'm Garvit and uh, he's, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm the co-founder of uh, Neurobridge and he's Athar, he's also the co-founder of Neurobridge. Uh, we started off as a ch chatbot like how ChatGPT is doing, we just thought we'd make it an Indian chatbot but that's where we found out like a lot of people have started using it for uh, learning, for upskilling themselves in new things. There are schools with only one teacher, more than one lakh schools with only one teacher. So it's difficult for them to cater to so many different individual learning needs. Again, uh, lack of multilingual cultural uh, references. Uh, all these teachers, it's difficult for them to teach in so many different languages as well. So right now, in any platform you go, right, uh, which is available in EdTech, everyone is doing uh, a simple video which a uh, tutor has recorded and then that is consumed by the masses and all the K-12 education uh, like students. So that uh, level of uh, relatability in the content itself is not available. Like some, uh, some person might understand more if a football analogy is used or some, uh, some student might understand more if a Avengers uh, reference is used. So that level of uh, personalization and adaptive learning is needed right now. So yeah, here, here's where Chanakya steps, uh, steps in and we start from the educator itself. It's an AI assistant for educators, but the delivery pattern will be students. So AI does everything behind the scenes. So we don't think of uh, AI as the main tool, uh, main technology that can be used. It is a very small tool that a teacher can have in their arsenal. And uh, they can upload any content they like, any material they like, for example, record lectures, videos, uh, then notes, handwritten notes, um, MCQs of whatever they have on hand and AI will structure it properly and make a fully learning experience for every individual child. Then comes in the feedback loop where uh, each and every individual interaction that a student is having on the platform and uh, how he is progressing through the whole course is being captured, summarized, uh, insights are generated based on that and it is recommended to teachers 
so that they can uh, variate their learning strategies between a different kind of subgroups of uh, students and make it more adaptive and more more uh, better for uh, students to learn from actually